Now let's talk about how we can measure an object's inertial mass and the gravitational mass. To measure the inertial mass, we have to use Newton's second law of motion, net force equals to ma. For example, we can use a spring scale or a force sensor to pull on an object along a horizontal surface with negligible friction. If we measure the acceleration of the object and record the force reading on the spring scale or a force sensor, we would have the net force and the acceleration to use to find the inertial mass. Since the vertical gravitational force mg does not affect the horizontal motion, this method also works in weightless situations. To measure the gravitational mass, we would have to involve the gravitational force on an object. For example, we can hang an object under a spring scale or a force sensor so we can measure its weight, i.e. the gravitational force from the Earth, mg. Then we can divide this force by the little g, the gravitational field, and we have the gravitational mass. What if I measure the mass of an object using a double pan balance with the object on one side and adding pieces of known mass on the other side until they are balanced? When I add up the mass on this side, do I get the inertial mass or the gravitational mass of the object? It's the gravitational mass. This thing is balanced when the gravitational forces on the two sides are equal. Actually, to be more accurate, I should say that it is balanced when the torques produced by the gravitational forces on the two sides are equal in magnitude. We will learn about torques later in the rotation unit. In any case, this method of measuring mass uses gravity. The method does not work in a weightless situation, because in a weightless situation, this thing can balance no matter how much mass I pile onto this pan. In a weightless situation, gravity would be zero on both sides, no matter what. How about a spring mass simple harmonic oscillator? I can attach an object to a spring with known spring constant and set it into oscillation along a horizontal surface with negligible friction. I can measure the period of the oscillation and use the period equation to find the mass of the object. Would this mass be the inertial mass or the gravitational mass? The gravitational force mg is vertical. It does not affect the object's horizontal oscillation. Besides, mg is canceled by normal force from the table. This setup measures the inertial mass. It does not require gravity to function, so it works in weightless situations too. Here's another version of the horizontal spring mass simple harmonic oscillator. This metal structure has two springy metal plates. We can place an object here and set it into oscillation. Again, the oscillation is horizontal, so the vertical gravitational force has no effect on the oscillation. In fact, if I use a string to support the weight, the oscillation will not be affected. See here, the object is no longer sitting on the device. Just like the horizontal spring mass system, this method measures the inertial mass and it works in weightless situations. Now let me show you a couple of NASA videos on how astronauts in orbiting International Space Station measure their mass in weightless situations. What you will see in the first video is a setup kind of like this one. The device measures the force on and the acceleration of the astronaut. The computer then does the calculation and find the inertial mass. But I think you could tell that there is something different between the hammer and the pen. With a little flick of my finger, the pen disappears because it has very little mass. Whereas the hammer with the same flick well, it hurts my finger more than the hammer. 
but because the hammer still keeps its mass, it's very different from the pen. And so the, the uh, question changes up here. Instead of measuring the body weight, what we want to do is measure the body's mass. And the mass is the reflection of the amount of matter that's inside an object, in this case us. And uh, that's what we're going to look at today, because we are all floating. So in order to measure mass, we will use the Newton's second law of motion. And what this does is measure the mass in an object, in our case in our bodies, by looking at the acceleration. Now, as Koichi said, if we know the force and we measure the acceleration, we can calculate the mass. And what the slam D does is it gives us a known force provided by two springs of about 23 newtons. And then it moves the body over a certain linear distance, which we'll show you in a minute. And in that motion, it measures the acceleration with very precise optical sensors. So then we have two things. We have the force from the springs. We have the acceleration that we measure. And then all we have to do is calculate the uh, mass. And we do that with our little laptop computer sitting right here. So in the end, we have all three things we, know, we need to uh, figure out how much uh, mass is in our body, essentially how much that we would weigh on the Earth. So we're going to show that to you right now, and uh, we're going to figure out exactly uh, how uh, much mass uh, Koichi has today. Now, Koichi's been in space for over 100 days, so his body has undergone some changes. His diet has been different, his uh, exercise has been different, and even his overall metabolism, again, how his body uses the food he eats, has changed just by being in space. So uh, this gives us an idea of the sum total of a lot of those factors. Now, what Koichi is doing is uh, moving the arm back on the slam D so that it will have a distance to travel and over that distance is where we measure the acceleration. Now it's very important for Koichi to get himself as tightly attached to the slam D as possible because we only want a pure motion between uh, Koichi's body and the arm of the slam D so that there's no extra motion which would show up as errors in the measurement. So now Koichi has uh, told the computer that uh, it's him and that he's ready to get his mass measured. And he's moved the arm back and he's ready to go. Okay. Now the computer gives him a few seconds to dampen out the motion that uh, remains from him getting onto it and reaching over. And then it moves over this fairly short distance, as you see. And it's a very gentle motion. And we want to stay as still as possible during that motion. Once the uh, final motion is dampened out, the computer will calculate the acceleration and, uh, and again, the mass, and that will give us our uh, body mass measurement for the day. What you will see in the second video is a setup kind of like this simple harmonic oscillator. The oscillator in the video looks vertical, but it is in a weightless situation, so it really does not matter in which direction the device is oriented. Hello, Jeff Williams on board the International Space Station. We often get the question, how do we weigh ourselves in space? Get introduced to calculus. You'll hear about uh, differential equation and a, a typical uh, uh, equation is a spring mass damper equation. If you know the properties of a spring and you know a damping ratio, uh, then you can measure the mass. Um, and it's a, it's a very simple problem of physics. And that's what we use here. We have this machine here that's got a, a known spring constant and a known damping ratio. And we've got it set up here, and I'm going to release it. And it's, you're going to see it's going to oscillate at some frequency here, and we're going to go through a calibration. It's going to release. And you see it's got a very predictable frequency here, and it's calibrating itself now. And we have an electronics unit over here that uh, gives a readout of the weight, and right now, like I said, it's uh, calibrating. So I'm going to reset it, and we're going to change it to the working mode to measure the body mass. I'm going to get on it, and now since we've got my mass on it, the frequency is going to be much less than it was during the calibration. And, and then we'll take that frequency, the known spring constant and the known damping ratio, and calculate my mass. So here we go. And 
then after about four calculations, we have a readout. 81 kilograms, a little more than that, 81 and a half kilograms. Okay, here's the spring inside. Это пружина, которая находится.